This is a supine cadaver. I am demonstrating from the right side. The camera person is on the left side. This structure that we see in front of us, this is the inferior vena cava. And this structure is the aorta. The aorta, as we know, is to the left of the inferior vena cava. Let's take a look at the extent of the aorta. This is the aortic hiatus, where my instrument is pointing right now. This is at the level of T12. And the aorta divides into the two common iliac arteries at the level of L4. So T12 to L4 is the extent of the aorta. Now let's take a look at the branches of the aorta. The branches are divided into what are known as the vascular plane concept. What is this vascular plane concept? We have three unpaired visceral branches. This is the first one. This is the celiac trunk, which is coming at the level of T12. The next one, this is the superior mesenteric, coming out the level of L1. And this is the inferior mesenteric at the level of L3. So these are the three unpaired visceral branches. The celiac trunk supplies the foregut, superior mesenteric supplies the midgut, and the inferior mesenteric supplies the hindgut. The inferior mesenteric continues into the pelvis as the superior rectal artery, and we can see that, and it supplies the rectum. The next set of branches are the paired visceral branches. The first set of branches are this. This one here, which I have lifted up, and this one. These are the renal arteries. In this particular cadaver, there are not one, but two separate distinct renal arteries coming from the aorta. The first set are the ones which I lifted up just now. They are supposed to come out at the level of, approximately the level of L1. But in this particular cadaver, we see yet one more artery coming from the aorta on this side as well as on this side. And they are coming separately and they're entering into the kidney on both the sides. So that is the first set of paired visceral branches. The next set of paired visceral branches are this one here. This is the left testicular artery and this is the right testicular artery, which comes out at the level of approximately L2. The next paired visceral branch we can see only on the right side, this one here which I have lifted up. This is the right suprarenal artery. We do not see the left suprarenal artery. The suprarenal glands as we know receives branches from many sources. One of them is from the aorta and that is what we see here. So these are the paired visceral branches. The next set of branches are the paired parietal branches. The first set of paired parietal branches are the inferior phrenic arteries which we cannot see because we have to remove the fascia and the liver. The next set is the subcostal artery which goes below the 12th rib. That also we cannot see in this dissection. But what we can see are the four lumbar arteries. To see that, let me push the aorta here and we can see the branches coming from the aorta. These are the lumbar arteries on the right side and when I pull on this side, we can see branches going on this side also. So these are the lumbar arteries and they are the ones which supply the posterior abdominal wall. So these are the paired parietal branches. Now let me mention some clinical correlations pertaining to the aorta. One of the important clinical correlation is aneurysm of the abdominal aorta, which is usually a result of atherosclerotic damage to the tunica media. The aneurysm, if it does occur, it occurs usually between the origin of the renal artery and the bifurcation of the aorta into the two common iliacs. So this is the location of the aneurysm of the abdominal aorta, in which case the inferior mesenteric artery arises from the apex of the aneurysm. When a patient has an aneurysm of the abdominal aorta, it produces an expansile pulsation, sometimes which can be not only felt, but can also be seen on the anti-abdominal wall, especially if the person is thin. If an aneurysm has seen by ultrasound, if the diameter of the aneurysm is more than 6 centimeters, it is more likely to rupture. So therefore, we have to treat it before it ruptures. Because after a rupture, mortality rate increases exponentially. In a thin person, we can normally feel the pulsation of the abdominal aorta at this level where my finger is located. We can feel it against the L4 lumbar vertebra, where the lumbar vertebra forms a normal lordotic curve. In elderly person, or as the age advances, there can be calcification of the tunica media and we can feel an axial crackling, which we can feel, and we can feel a little bit here also. That is known as Monkeberg's medial calcific sclerosis. This is a plain x-ray of the abdomen to show Monkeberg's medial calcific sclerosis of the abdominal aorta and the iliacs. Superior mesenteric artery, as it crosses over the left renal vein, it can compress the left renal vein, and also in a male, the left gonadal testicular vein and produce what is known as the left renal vein entrapment syndrome and left testicular varicose. Let me mention some clinical applications of the abdominal aorta. The applications pertain to aortogram and angiogram. The usual route for angiogram is the femoral artery. The cannula is inserted through the femoral artery, it goes through the external iliac arteries, goes to the common iliac artery and then it enters into the aorta. And after that, 
under a C arm and image intensifier, we can cannulate either the inferior mesenteric artery, the superior mesenteric artery, the celiac trunk and get the respective angiograms. This is a selective celiac artery angiogram. And this is a superior mesenteric angiogram to show the distribution of the vessels. We can cannulate the renal arteries and we can get the renal angiogram. This is a selective renal artery angiogram to show the segmental renal arteries. And not only that, we can continue the cannulation and we can do even coronary angiograms. This is a left coronary angiogram to show the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. And this is an RCA angiogram to show the right coronary artery. So this is a very useful application of the aorta and its angiograms. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe.